Welcome everyone to Neverwinter on PC. My name is Reiner and today we're going to talk about choosing a class. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you would like to see more information or videos about Neverwinter, hit the subscribe button. Today we'll be mostly talking about the roles of each of the classes in Neverwinter and all of their base mechanics. We will not talk about specific builds or which class is the best for damage dealing, buffing or tanking. We will also not go very deep into the details, so I will keep it pretty simple and understandable for people who have never played the game. Stats, boons and spe uh, specific powers will be something for a different video altogether. This will be all about the basics of the classes. The goal, as you can imagine, is to give new players insight in which class they should pick to play with. What fits their style? Combat, in my opinion, is really put well together in this game and the class that you pick makes a big difference on how combat will pan out for yourself in the end. It would be a shame if you work your way all the way up to level 70 and at that point you realize you don't really like the playstyle or you see something someone else uh, and you realize that you actually prefer that person's playstyle. This video should help prevent that from happening. There are currently 8 classes in Neverwinter and we will cover all 8 in this video today. I will try to demonstrate as much as possible about what I'm going to tell you and if you're interested in a specific class use the index in the description to jump to the class of your choosing. But before we go to the classes uh, we I will tell you a little bit uh, in general uh, each class has two so-called paragons. Uh, at level 10 you will be presented with the choice to pick one of the two and for new players this will be very confusing. What, did you, what should you pick? Uh, I will show you the choices for each class and what each choice roughly means for your character. Uh, each class also has three possible feet, paths uh, and the paragon combined with your choices in the three paragon feet paths determines the role of your character in multiplayer content. This sounds complex, but it will get uh, easier to understand later on the video. Seeing that the feed uh, paths can be mixed really gives a lot of potential options here. Each class also has at least two, but often more, special mechanics. Uh, and you always have a shift mechanic, which will be able to use as soon as you hold a main weapon, which is at level 1 so basically immediately uh, and you use this mechanic by pressing the shift button uh, that's why it's called the that's why I call it the shift mechanic uh, you also always have a tap class mechanic which will be unlocked at level 10 and obviously you use that one by pressing the tap key uh, if there are any other important class mechanics for a specific class I will also mention that I will be also mentioning uh, roles, as I said before. Um, the possible roles that I will be mentioning in this video will be DPS, which is damage dealing, buff, which is all about making allies stronger, debuff, which is about making enemies weaker, and heal, which is all about healing yourself and allies. And finally, you also have the tank, which is basically taking the hits from the enemies. There is one other role that is dying a bit in my opinion, which is the controller role. In this role you want to make sure that the enemies get less chances to attack you or your party. Um, and this role is dying a bit because enemies are becoming more and more control immune. One last thing before we start, uh, not too long ago loadouts were added to the game um, and this sounds very confusing maybe but these loadouts make it possible for your character to have multiple different different setups on the same character so I have five here um, but this mechanism makes it so that your character can have multiple 
roles on one character. So from all the choices that I'm going to show you, you can do all of those choices multiple times and put them in a different loadout. And you can change this uh, loadout and with that your role even inside a dungeon. So the first class that we're going to look at is the Hunter Ranger. I'm currently on a Hunter Ranger. Uh, this is the class that I play most. And the Hunter Ranger is mostly known for having not three encounter powers. So the encounter powers are these three red blocks here. But they have six. You can swap these three for different three by pressing by going from melee to ranged, and I will explain that mechanic in a moment. Uh, but you can have six powers here, and each one of these powers has a separate cooldown. So if I use a power, you see it goes on cooldown. If I go to ranged, you see it doesn't have a cooldown. If I go back, you see that the cooldown is still going. Because of this trait, um, rangers can use a lot of encounter powers in combat. This is especially true for the trapper feet path. One important mechanic for the hunter ranger is the grasping roots which keeps enemies in place while damaging them basically controlling them. Um, so the control part is not really uh, working anymore but it's still very damaging to the enemies. Um, I will show that later on but uh, if you like a very dynamic gameplay while doing pretty good damage this might be the class for you. So let's talk about the mechanics uh, other than the grasping roots. First one is the shift mechanic. The shift mechanic for the hunter ranger is called shift if I'm not mistaken and what it does is moves you in a specific direction for a short distance compared to other classes and it uses up a little bit of stamina. Your stamina you can see here so right now I'm pretty drained in stamina because I shifted quite often. And if your stamina is too low, you cannot use this mechanic anymore. Um, so as I said, this is a very short shift, a short uh, displacement of your character. And it uses also a pretty low amount of stamina. So you can shift pretty often on a full bar of stamina. The second mechanic is the tap mechanic um, and I don't think it really has a name but this is the tap mechanic uh, that changes your stance from melee to ranged and back uh, and this enables you to have more encounter powers. So let's, let's talk about the paragons, uh, let me go to an empty loadout. So here you can see the two paragons for the Hunter Ranger. You have the Storm Warden and the Pathfinder. And if you pick one of these, uh, it will enable some different powers, also some different feats and class features for your character. Uh, so this, this determines some of your powers. The Storm Warden is more focused on dealing AOE damage uh, and the Pathfinder is more about buffing and more single target as I see it. But the difference is really small between these two. The Paragon Feed Paths, and let me go back to uh, this one, are under the Feeds section uh, these are the normal feats and these are the paragon feat paths. You have three for each class. For the hunter rangers, archery, combat and trapper. Archery is all about long distance, so uh, ranged um, damage. It focuses mainly on your ranged powers, so your melee powers will be less powerful if you go into this uh, feat path. You can also have uh, go for the combat feat path which focuses mainly on your melee powers, uh, which makes your range powers less efficient. And you can have 
uh, and you can go for the trapper feed path which focuses on both uh, of your um, types both of your stances so in this feed path you will be switching stances quite often actually uh, and that's uh, actually my favorite um, so let's show a couple of these things in practice um, as you as you as I said you have grasping roots so if I use a skill on an enemy he will be standing still for a bit he will be actually stuck in place and he will take damage so at some point the enemy will die you also see that uh, you can use many um, skills actually for the trapper feed you can only almost only use encounter powers don't uh, look too much at the damage difference between the characters that I will um, demonstrate to you because this character is a lot stronger than the other ones and that's not really uh, a sign that this character is overpowered or something like that anyway um, that's a little bit on how the hunter ranger fights I hope it is clear if you have any questions about the hunter ranger let me know down below the second class uh, is the hunt the great weapon fighter the great weapon fighter is the embodiment of a damage dealer um, they can buff themselves up to doing a massive amount of damage uh, if you want to see high damage values this is the class for you uh, one of their class mechanics is to, to mark a target with some of their attacks and this results in the target taking unsurprisingly more damage uh, this is all the great weapon fighter is about and in the meantime they're actually pretty tanky also um, they have uh, also as I said all of them have uh, the shift mechanic uh, the shift mechanic for the great weapon fighter is sprint and it just makes you run a lot faster and while sprinting like this you ignore speed reducing effects of course sprinting also costs stamina just like with the hunter ranger the tap class mechanic is called unstoppable uh, unstoppable i will demonstrate it in a moment unstoppable makes it so that you have higher attack speed but your hits are slightly less hard uh, and it also gives incoming damage resistance and temporary HP uh, health points um, it's built up from using powers and from doing damage um, and this makes them very tanky as well as immune to crowd control effects while unstoppable is active as I said we will demonstrate that in a second so if it's not clear right now I hope it will be clear in a moment the great weapon fighter has the paragons iron vanguard and swordmaster uh, iron vanguard is more towards the controlling and defensive side so this is for a, a great weapon fighter that wants to tank a bit which is a bit a little bit weird and you have swordmaster which is all about offensive doing as much damage as possible you will see mostly uh, great weapon fighter sword masters as for the paragon feed paths uh, you have the instigator the destroyer and a sentinel the instigator is um, about buff debuff dps and tank it's actually a little bit of everything or a lot of nothing as you can see I have a couple of points here and this is what I meant with you can mix uh, some of these feed paths you can put points in whatever you want but you have to do it from left to right 
The second one of the destro destroyer, this is pure DPS uh, and self buffing, so you maximize your damage in this one. And the Sentinel is once again uh, focused on tank and a little bit on debuffing your uh, enemies. Let's go to the enemies and demonstrate the fighting a bit. So the great weapon fighter is all about running around. As you can see to the left here, I will build up this uh, this uh, determination it's called. And once it's past the halfway point, you'll be able to enable unstoppable and it slowly drains to zero again. And once it's zero, your unstoppable ends. Unstoppable is stronger if you uh, let it get to full before using it, but this is not always possible. Um, so now it's full, and this is the maximum uh, buff you get. So that's the tap mechanic in here. Um, the other mechanic that I mentioned was Mark. Mark I use by pressing Q here. You can see the axis on the enemies and this will make them take more damage from attacks. As I said, all about maximizing damage. So that was the Great Weapon Fighter. Next up is the Devoted Cleric. Devoted clerics are very good healers and buffers. Um, they are often highly requested in dungeon runs due to their buffing and also debuffing abilities. If you want to be highly requested for dungeon runs and don't mind uh, being not being the biggest damage dealer, this might be the class for you. Um, their shift mechanic is called dodge and you'll see it looks quite a bit like the hunter ranger shift but it's a bigger distance and it costs more stamina so you can dodge less often than the hunter ranger can shift while dodging of course and that's also true for the hunter ranger you will be able to uh, dodge attacks so even if you're uh, about to be hit you will uh, your enemy will miss you. Uh, the tap class mechanic is channel divinity. And that's this. And this class mechanic uh, is a little bit complicated, but I hope I can show it you uh, to you in a moment in the uh, combat demonstration. Channel divinity gives access to build up divinity. Uh, and divinity you can see here which puts encounter cooldowns to zero if you have stacks. As you can see, you can have three stacks here, the pluses. And if you have pluses here and you go to the uh, from yellow to the blue color, this is when you are in your divinity uh, mode. And if you have pluses, your encounter powers will always be at zero seconds. Uh, the maximum, as I said, is three stacks. And if you uh, use three stacks in Divinity, you will gain uh, an empowered buff. When you are empowered and you use a normal encounter power, this encounter power will be stronger. Sounds very complicated. It's actually not that easy to use, um, but it is can be very very potent. Uh, last thing, divinity can be obtained by casting at will powers. Uh, so the green ones, which is right and left mouse button. As all classes, the devoted cleric has two uh, paragons. You have the divine oracle and the anointed champion. Uh, the divine oracle is more focused uh, towards passive buffing and decent solo 
damage or you can actually make a choice in this um, I would say if you're a cleric start by using this paragon it's easier and the second one is anointed champion uh, anointed champion is uh, very much focused on active buffing and here it's very very important that you use your powers in the correct way so now to the feet paths um, as with all classes they have three uh, virtuous 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 that's the one uh, faithful and righteous um, virtuous is all about healing healing and more healing and a little bit of buffing uh, faithful is more more healing and buffing and righteous is actually about doing some damage debuffing and buffing your enemies um, yeah that's about it let's see so the devoted cleric um, let's actually go to the other loadouts the devoted cleric is not really a damage dealer uh, at some point you will do more damage as you can see here I'm charging up my divinity by using at wills by attacking enemies with my melee uh, at will powers and if I go to uh, divinity I can use these stacks I will also show you that the encounter of the the cooldowns will be reset to zero so now I have three stacks if I use a encounter power here it's on cooldown if I go to divinity it's not on cooldown anymore so this will enable you to use stacks more often let's kill this one So, if you are going to use three skills in Divinity, I didn't see the... Um, that was odd. So here you can see Fully Empowered, it's this icon here. And at this point, your next encounter power will do uh, additional effects or more damage. Uh, of course, it's on a cooldown so uh, or on a timeout. So right now, I just lost the buff. By the way, if you're in Divinity, you cannot use melee powers. Well, you can, but you will actually use up Divinity in this mode. So, uh, that's about it for the Devoted Cleric. Next up is the Oathbound Paladin. Oathbound Paladins are heavily armored fighters with a lot of health. They excel in tanking the biggest bosses for extended periods without even taking a scratch. Their biggest asset is the massive amounts of temporary health they can generate very often. Um, which means that they don't really need healing and this means they can survive on their own. If you practically want to be immortal, this might be the class for you. So they have uh, also a shift mechanic, of course, and the shift mechanic is called Sanctuary. And this shift mechanic and also the tab mechanic actually works well they all work differently but this one is more focused towards the paragons that you take so sanctuary will create this area around you while slowly taking your stamina away um, in this area you will heal yourself and also other people and also increase your damage resistant and uh, as a resistance and also damage resistance of your allies uh, while in the sanctuary mode you will also be immune to control effects and you cannot use powers 
while Sanctuary is active. So, uh, show you using Sanctuary. I cannot use any Q or E. I cannot use any powers for the Devotion Paragon. So you have two Paragons. Um, let's go there first because otherwise this will be confusing. So you have two Paragons. Uh, you have the Oath of Devotion and the Oath of Protection. And it's actually pretty simple. The Oath of Devotion is very, very focused on healing. And the Oath of Protection is very, very focused on tanking. There's a real, real big difference between the two. So, back to this one. Um, the Sanctuary... Um, class mechanic actually also works different for these paragons for the devotion paragon you heal enemies or or not enemies you don't heal enemies you heal your allies and yourself even faster than before and with the oath of protection you have even more damage resistance than before so focusing uh, even more on the core of your paragon you also have the class mechanic uh, the tap class mechanic which is called Divine Call. Um, also, this one is very different for each Paragon, uh, but they both use Divine Energy, which is built up by either uh, using powers in combat or just being out of combat. As you can see, it builds up automatically and pretty quick. But it also builds up when you're in combat. If, you're, uh, if you chose the Oath of Devotion, uh, this Divine Call will heal allies around you. And if you cast it multiple times quickly, you heal even faster. So once again, focusing even more on your core. Um, with the Oath of Protection, you will taunt enemies close to you. So you will force them to attack you. Which is a good thing because you're the tank. And if they attack you, you will reflect damage they do to you back at them. So they will actually damage themselves by hitting you. Which is perfect for a tank. The Paragon Feed Puffs for the Open para, uh, para Paladin ugh, are Justice, Bulwark and Light. Justice is all about doing damage. Bulwark is more focusing on the tank side and Light is focusing on buffing your allies and about healing. So let's see the Oathbound Paladins in action. So compared to other classes, the Oathbound Paladin is not very mobile. Uh, the Great Weapon Fighter had a sprint, the Hunter Ranger had a shift, and the Devoted Cleric had a dodge. And this one just has the Sanctuary, which makes them actually walk even slower. But the Oathbound Paladin has some skills that make them jump to an enemy, which helps with mobility. Um, as I said, they build up a lot of temporary health, which you can see like this. Uh, temporary health is either golden and they can even make more uh, this is blue temporary health uh, the blue temporary health will disappear in a minute but you can basically continuously generate this temporary health and your normal health bar this red one will hardly ever disappear let me show you that again so you go in you use Templar's Wrath which gives you temporary HP you make them taunt you. You can use this to make them attack you even more and damage themselves. Let's do that again. And you will hardly ever take damage. So, that is, in a nutshell, the Oathbound Paladin. And my Hunter Ranger pad is still there. Nice bug. So, next up is the Trickster Rogue. The Trickster Rogues are nimble fighters that can turn invisible. This is their core mechanic and used in the correct way they can dish out a pretty big uh, amount of damage. 
Rogues are also pretty decent in PvP if you are interested in fighting other players. If you like to sneak up on enemies, uh, this might be the class for you. So, Trickster Rogues, uh, their shift class mechanic is called Shift. Where did we hear that before? Uh, and this one isn't very um, unoriginally also um, displacement in a certain direction. This one actually moves exactly the same distance as the Devoted Cleric uh, and uses about the same amount of stamina. Their tap class mechanic is all about stealth. Uh, this is the core mechanic of a trickster rogue. You can go to stealth when your stealth bar, which is this one here, is completely full. And the bar will drain in uh, 5 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, while you're invisible. While in stealth, your enemies will not see you and they will be confused when you walk past them. So they do know someone is there, but they cannot attack you. And while in stealth, your powers, all your powers deal, uh, well, they have special effects, you might say, but most of them just deal more damage. But using a power will end your invisibility early. Uh, the stealth bar automatically slowly fills up at a constant rate. There are uh, some mechanics uh, that can speed this up. Uh, but I will not go into detail on those. So the paragons for the trickster rogue are whisper knife. Let's put this out. Whisper knife and master infiltrator. The whisper knife is about debuffing your enemies and doing damage, lots of damage, and master infiltrator is focusing on the stealth uh, core mechanic and on single target DPS. <coughs> the Paragon feed paths of the Trickster Rogue are Saboteur, Scoundrel and Executioner. Saboteur is about buffing um, yourself and your team. Uh, well, it's buffing your stealth mechanic actually and about damage more damage. Scoundrel is about debuffing your enemy and also about damage and Executioner is actually all about damage. So the Trickster Rogue is a damage dealer in um, yeah it's just a damage dealer. Let me show you a little bit on how these Trickster Rogues fight. Typically with a trickster rogue you want to get a go in invisible your first power that you use will do extra damage and you want to stay out of um, range of attacks because you're pretty squishy <coughs> so as you can see my trickster rogue is not that strong I was doing empowered one of these and that was enough to kill him. So that was the um, yeah, well, that was the demonstration of the stealth mechanic, I guess. Uh, let's do it again. You go in stealth. You can use powers. You try to dodge out of the way of enemies. You don't want to go into that. Uh, but many of the powers of the trickster rogue will also um, interrupt the enemy they will be uh, confused and dazed which will help um, to survive all right so that's the trick Sorok. next up is the guardian fighter uh, the guardian fighter class is probably the most versatile class of them all uh, they can tank very well, they can buff very well, and they can actually dish out a ton of single target damage also. On top of that, they are also very good in PvP, in case you are interested in that. Of course, they will not be strong in all of these 
uh, roles all at once. That would mean the class would be broken. But if you want versatility, this might be the class for you. Their shift mechanic is, just like the Oathbound Paladin, not a displacement, but it actually makes it so that you hold up your shield, uh, and it's called guard. While you're holding up your shield, you, well, it's very obvious, you block a lot of the damage that you would otherwise have taken. And it does make you also more resistant to crowd effects, uh, control effects. Guardian fights can actually attack while holding the shield, so the Oathbound Paladin couldn't do anything. But the Guardian fighter gets two uh, attacks that they can still do, and they can actually still... Uh, can they use encounter powers? No, they cannot use encounter powers. Can I use dailies? Uh, but they can use two different melee powers that they get. Um, for the guardian fighters, they actually don't have a stamina bar here, but their stamina bar, stamina uh, stamina bar is here. And for some reason it goes in two directions and it slowly drains also from both sides while you while you are holding up your shield. Uh, the tap class mechanic is one that we saw at the Great Weapon Fighter. It's called Mark and this one marks enemies from a distance. It actually looks exactly the same as from the God, uh, Great Weapon Fighter uh, and it increases the damage they will take from future attacks. The paragons for the Guardian Fighter are actually exactly the same as from the Great Weapon Fighter. You have Iron Vanguard, which is the tanky one, uh, more controlling and defensive, and you have the Swordmaster, which is about dealing damage. For the Guardian Fighter, both of these options are viable depending on what your role uh, should be inside multiplayer content. As for the Paragon Feed Paths, you have the Conqueror Feed Path, Protector and Tactician. Conqueror is all about dealing damage as much as possible. Protector is, as you can tell from the name, all about tanking. So you want to take all the hits and Tactician is about debuffing your uh, enemies and buffing your allies, which is very, very good. Um, so yeah, let's see this Guardian Fighter in action. So Guardian Fighters also don't have a displacement um, mechanic but they do also have powers that make them more mobile. As you can see, you can mark targets from a distance with your tap. This will make them take more damage. And you want to try to tank attacks with your shield. And also you can attack while your shield is up until, of course, your stamina is drained. The marks will not last forever, and you can have a maximum of three people marked at the same time. But it is very important to keep marking people because it does increase damage by quite a bit. Let's do this group also. And that's it. So they do quite a bit of damage. And as you can see, I didn't lose any health. Okay, now we have two pets from other classes here. This is so weird. All right, that was the Guardian Fighter. If you have any questions about this one, just let me know in the comments. Next up is the Control Wizard. Uh, the Control Wizard is, well, it already says it in the name, uh, the main controller of the eight. Um, they dish out massive damage in a big area while freezing targets for short durations. Uh, the main class mechanic for the control wizard is called Chill and 
This mechanic slows enemies and ultimately freezes them in place. Uh, if you want to make the enemy's life miserable, uh, this might be the class for you. Their shift class mechanic is called teleports and it moves you actually a pretty decent uh, range in a certain direction, uh, but it also costs a significant amount of stamina. Their tap class mechanic is very different from other classes because for a con control wizard you can add a fourth encounter power on this tab button and you will use it when you press the tab key. This encounter power on the tab uh, button, um, well this, this is called spell mastery and this encounter power will actually be stronger than normal. The paragons for the control wizard are Master of Flame and Spellstorm Mage. Uh, Master of Flame is about buffing uh, allies and debuffing enemies and the Spellstorm Mage is about DPS. Very simple. Finally we also have the feed paths. Um, they have the Oppressor feed path, Thaumaturge and Renegade. Uh, Oppressor is about buffing and debuffing. Thaumaturge is about DPS and Renegade is actually also about DPS. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about the big difference between the two, but there are probably plenty of controllers out there that can tell you the difference. This is all about damage, um, guys. So, let's see the control wizard in action. I think in this area they still have their um, Control powers, let's not use this one. So if I use a power on these guys, they will slowly start to freeze, while well, the one on the back will. As you can see their feet are starting to freeze and now they cannot do anything anymore. And this is the controlling part. So if the controlling works, this is very, very strong. Because you don't give the enemies any chance to do anything. But for bosses, um, this doesn't work. They just ignore these powers. Here you can see I've just frozen everything. Let's kill these last ones. So the control wizard is also a very potent damage dealer. And also highly requested, or highly requested, uh, pretty good requested for buffing and debuffing. So that's the control wizard. Let's go to the last class. So the last class for today is the Scorch Warlock. Uh, the Scorch Warlock class is another pretty versatile class. Uh, they can dish out decent damage, heal massive amounts and can also buff and debuff pretty good. This class works by feeding off the souls of their enemies, which the souls will actually fight alongside you in battle. Another core mechanic of the Warlock is that you can curse your foes, which gives many boosts in battle. If you like cursing your foes, this might be the glass for you. Their shift mechanic is called Shadow Slip, and this one is a little bit like the Great Weapon Fighter Sprint. Uh, it makes you move faster and you gain damage resistance. Um, but this damage resistance actually slowly goes down while shifting. So if you're shifting for longer periods of time, your, uh, the damage that you are ignoring from your enemies is getting less and less. Their tap mechanic is the curse part. Uh, this is called Warlock's Curse. 
and if you use tab while well, looking at an enemy just like the marks from uh, the great weapon fighter for example you put a curse on an enemy and this will deal damage to them and also will heal you and allies based on the rest of your build the paragons for a scorch warlock are hellbringer and soulbinder hellbringer is all about doing damage and soulbinder focuses on your soul mechanic and healing um yeah finally you also have of course the feed paths uh, the feed paths for a scorch warlock are fury damnation and temptation uh, fury is about doing damage uh, damnation is also damage but this is more focused around your soul puppets uh, and temptation is about buffing debuffing and healing so let's see the scorch warlock in action So you can curse your targets, you can see that by the icon above them. I think you can curse at most three at a time again. And as you can see, I should have, oh there's a uh, soul puppet and he's fighting on our side. So you will actually have two companions while you are a warlock. Let's do these last ones. So I'm definitely not an expert on the Warlock, uh, but this is about how this Warlock plays. You will have a lot of companions with a daily, you can actually get some more spirits to follow you for a short duration, there they went. But yeah, you will never be alone with this class. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Um, my plan is to make this video one in a series, explaining all the main aspects of Neverwinter for newer players. Uh, if anything I said in this quite long video is incorrect, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.